What is up, everyone? Welcome back to the fantastic duo show. My name is Alexis Cardozo. You guys I think you know me by now, and I'm here with the one and only Steve Cardenas. What's up, Steve? What's up, guys? Welcome to uh, our another edition of the live show of Fantastic Duo Show. Thanks for joining us. And uh, we're excited today uh, because we've got one of my good friends um, who I've known for like 25 years now. Um, this is the guy who was on the show from day one, you know what I mean? So uh, this is Mr. OG himself. The Red Ranger, Mr. Austin St. John. Welcome, sir. How are you? There ya? he is. There he is. Oh, man. <laughs> Good to you, bro. This is uh, this is the man who uh, who did who did me a solid by kicking ass when I when I finally left. <laughs> oh, well, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, uh, I, I know it's like a lot of times when we do like conventions and stuff, people always say, "Oh, yeah, did you? Were you worried about like you know having to fill all these big shoes?" I'm like, "Yeah, I definitely knew there was going to be some." upset kids that that austin had left the show you know i just hoped that i could try to you know um do it justice you know but uh yeah brother so this is crazy man you know so uh, how's the uh the lockdown been treating you well, i got three babies you know i got 10 10 uh just turned seven and five now and uh the, the natives are restless they are over it yeah, see, I can imagine that. Yeah, I mean, like, I have a daughter, but she's already all grown up. She's twenty one. She lives in L A. So, you know, uh, I couldn't imagine having like little ones, you know, in the house all the time. Uh, I couldn't imagine they've been that. Since March, like they they shut down school they can, a week before spring break, and they've been out ever since. So this is the longest summer. <laughs> yeah, and, no yeah, kidding. Homeschooling, and just you know, proximity. One day everybody's happy and they love each other. The next day everybody's you know contemplating homicide. So. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Alex, you got you got little you got little ones too, right? Oh Alex, man, yeah, 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 you know. But you know what? One one of them is in college, the other one is uh studying in, you know, high school right now. She's gonna be a senior, so um those two are off on their own. The little one likes to destroy everything, but what are we gonna do? You know what I'm saying? What are we gonna do? So <laughs> yeah. yeah, what do you think about it? <laughs> yeah, so Austin, man, so a lot of, a lot to unpack here uh with you, man, like and, and all for the good reasons, you know, uh martial artists, your second degree uh black belt in taekwondo, am I right about this? First degree in, in judo. I mean, certified badass, pr- pretty much, right? Um <laughs> a while ago. I haven't practiced taekwondo or judo in a minute. I have <laughs> yeah. buddies that are, that are jitsu guys, uh either Gracie or Machado. And uh judo does me well in the mix. We hit the ground, I do okay, and then I'm like, oh yeah, there's a lot more after. Steve was the first one that showed me that. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, jujitsu, I, I got first introduced to jujitsu. And, you know, after I started doing jujitsu, I, I, even though I still practice like, you know, taekwondo and stuff like that, I didn't really focus on it as much, you know. Um, jujitsu, as probably Austin will tell you too, is, it's it's more of a thinking game, you know what I mean? Whereas like with Taekwondo, it's like, well, the sparring aspect of it, you know, you have to think a bit, but in, in Jiu Jitsu, like you really have to think like chess, you know, you gotta think three or four moves ahead, you know, to you know, and try to anticipate what your training partner might do and all that stuff like that. So it's it's definitely a different game, you know. But uh I've found it very stimulating for the mind and the body together, you know, which I think is really important when it comes to martial arts. So uh I've always been been a big fan of uh jiu jitsu, you know? Yeah, jitsu was one of those I was like, okay, judo's great for the transition game. If you're in competition, it's great for you it's great I mean it's an Olympic sport. So that's yeah. great. And you're definitely not a slouch if you're hitting the Olympics in the world of judo. Right. Yeah. But yeah. That's not what I want on the street. So I dropped a lot of crop when I got overseas and or dropped a lot of the TKD and, and went to crop and those quarters and Kenpo, which I had in my teen years. And, uh, and right. I always had it back in my mind after I left the show, what Steve had showed me. And I was like, okay. So my first real exposure after you to, to Jits was Machado style at a Foothills Karate Studio at Master Allen. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, when I first, yeah, when I first started doing jujitsu, I, I started with the Machado brothers. That's who I started with. Okay. Uh, and I, that's where I got my blue belt from. And then eventually switched to Hollywood Brazilian jujitsu, which was uh, Sean Patrick Flannery's, uh, 
uh, school. He's also a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu as well, yeah. too. For those of you guys that don't know, Sean Patrick Flannery, he was the uh, uh, guy from uh, Boondock Saints, you know, the one with Norman Reedus and uh, and him. They were yep. the brothers that were going around killing people. <laughs> so that's a great cult classic movie. Yeah. Uh, so uh, so that's who I ended up, you know, finishing a lot of my training with was with him and whatnot. But, um, y- you know, it's funny, like, because you were talking about how you do all different kinds of different martial arts, right, Austin? And it's like, Everybody. you know, it's it's like important, you know, because before when I was on Power Rangers, at least in the beginning anyway, I was I was pretty much like Taekwondo, you know, and um, I even opened up my own martial arts studio there in Valencia where we filmed the show and everything. And that's how I got introduced to jujitsu because this guy came into my studio and essentially like challenged me <laughs> in my own yeah. studio, you know. And I was like, ah, I don't know what jujitsu is because this is when jujitsu was still kind of like not very popular yet or, or right. well known. And so I was like, nah, I don't know what you just, but essentially the guy like challenged me in my studio and he was like, come at me like any way you want. I was like, Oh man, not going to show me up in my own school. So I, I, we started sparring and you know, he just like basically grabbed me by my waist, picked me up, dumped me on my head, rolled me over on my stomach, jumped on my back and put me in a chokehold. And I, all of that, <laughs> I was tapping out and I had never felt or seen anything like that. And I was essentially, you know, tapping out and in about 10 seconds from start to finish. And I was like, wow, you know, and, and that's when I realized, you know, the, the, that it's important to have some diversity in your martial arts. You know, a lot of times, especially back, you know, back in the day, martial artists were very monogamous and they were very like, this style's the best and, you know, no yeah. other style is yeah. good. And you know what I mean? And, and yeah. what it did was it, it, it limited you and you, you know, we're walking around with a bit of a false sense of security in a sense, you know? And, uh, so that was like a big eye opener for me. And I was already been a black belt and been training for like 10 years before I had learned that lesson, you know? So, uh, since then I'm like, I welcome all kinds of styles of martial arts cause I want to learn a little bit of aspects of all kinds of stuff. I think it's important, you know, and I'm sure Austin would agree with that too. Cause you know, you, you all do, do different kinds of stuff as well too. Yeah, man. I've played with a lot of different, a lot of, lot of different guys. Uh, I've so, let's see, Ray Parker, Ray, Ray Parker. Kenpo, Dave German, Dave German did the Panther videos. Dave German was, uh, you know, he's, he was a big dude, had a big old belly, insane at Kenpo. And he had a mean streak and he used to kick the hell out of people. He enjoyed hurting people, but he was good. He taught uh, Ray Schneider. Ray Schneider taught my father and I. Schneider combined Nawaza, Chinese kickboxing, uh, bits of jujitsu, and Kenpo. But it was his own breakdown and system of Kenpo, Twin Eagle right. and Talon, things like that two-man forms, traditional in some senses. And he did a little stick fighting and stuff like that. And that was my teen years. And as I moved into TKD, back into it, and came to the show, it was almost all the big flashy kicks, which people love about TKD. Right. Yeah. So that was that was how I landed the job there. After that, once I started heading and getting locked up to go overseas, it all disappeared. It all disappeared. I was like, I'm not going to take the time that I need to put a foot upside your face. <laughs> well, I've got a rucksack. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, over. exactly. I mean, some things are just not practical. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it's not wise to in a street fight or in any kind of altercation to be like throwing kicks super high. Cause every time you do, you have to lean back for that and you lose balance as a, as, yeah. as a, as a result. So, you know, it's, it's a little bit better to get a little bit more close quarter, you know, the more, can, the more you can have your hands on someone, the more you can control things a bit. So you can move, use their leverage and stuff, you know? And, and honestly, cool. yeah. So yeah, you were. Yeah, go ahead. The the only thing I could add on to this conversation right now is the fact that in the Marine Corps we learned jujitsu and taekwondo, and that was it. <laughs> you know, you guys, you guys learned a hell of a <laughs> lot of things. We just learned how to basically just you know make sure we didn't get choked out and and choke other people out. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, hey, it, I've always been a fan of like anything is better than nothing. You know what I mean? Like all styles have good things about them or otherwise they wouldn't exist, you know? So right. learning, you know, to try to pull the, what things work best for you. And, you know, quite honestly, it's like anything is a martial art. If you can pull it off, you know what I mean? If you can make it work and then you can make it work consistently on multiple different types of people that are coming at you, then, you know, if that's your style of martial art, then that's what it is. You know what I mean? That's pretty awesome. That's <laughs> so, really I, good. I have a buddy who's, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, no. no I, I was agreeing with him. <laughs> so I, I, have a, I have a buddy who's an incredible uh, 
mechanic, car guy. I mean, to the extreme, the extreme stunt man, yeah, Cord Newman. The guy is just incredible. And uh, I've talked to him, and I've talked to other guys, and I kind of stole some of the lingo they use because they're talking about tools and blah blah blah. And it kind of hit me that martial arts is is not unlike a toolbox for a master mechanic. You know, you may have a VW coming in one afternoon. You may have a Toyota. Then you may have Ferrari. You may have a BMW, maybe something international, maybe an import. Or it could be a semi-truck with a big diesel the next. And if you don't have the tools with which to reach into your toolbox and manage each one of those vehicles, you got problems. And the yeah. best way in my mind to do it is to be hybrid. And I wasn't hybrid because it was cool or because I was smart. I was hybrid because my dad was a Marine. We moved all the damn time. Mm. And I had to take what was available when I got wherever I was going. And that's what started me. So early on, I learned the value of it. And after Steve put me in an arm bar and introduced me to uh, to uh, jujitsu, I was like, I'm going to file that one away for later. I ain't forgetting that one. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, like, that's well, that's the same thing happened to me, too. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, it's just sometimes you're going to get surprised with something that you hadn't seen before. And that's what I love about martial arts and I, why I welcome it, you know, because everyone's got something to teach in some form or another, you know what I mean? And it just depends if you're receptive or not, whether you get better. Amen. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we, I know you briefly touched on it guys. You were talking about overseas and stuff. Maybe, uh, I know, uh, Alex was a Marine and, uh, he, um, you know, was o- overseas, uh, a lot, uh, fighting for our country. And we appreciate that brother. And, uh, Austin, I know that you did a lot of like contract work over there as well too. Maybe you could touch on that just a little bit if you don't, if you can. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it, <laughs> there's no James Bond secrets in the world. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I shipped over in 2010. I took a contract uh, as a medic and it was a private company that was attached to Army Operations in Kuwait. And um, I ended up uh, southern border. So Kuwait, Iraq, southern border down there, the command post, which is public knowledge. It's called Camp Arif John. Mm-hmm. And then you had Kuwaiti Naval Base, which was uh, Camp Patriot, which was the U.S. contingent inside of Kuwaiti Naval Base. So I was down there. I was at Aspod. I was at Ali Asalim, which is connected to KWI, Kuwaiti International Airport. That was the Air Force contingent there. And I was at Camp Buring, which was the Northern Command Base in, uh, in Kuwait at the time. And uh, Kabari Crossing, which was the physical crossing up Iron Horse Road that led from Kuwait into Iraq. And then uh, from there, I, I tied into other other contracts. And I was, uh, I was all over the place for years. And my primary mission was to provide medical care to U S military personnel, work with U S military resources and, uh, keep our boys safe. You know? Yeah, no doubt. Well, wow, that's crazy, man. Yeah. That's a, a massive responsibility. No doubt. Um, so what, what, what most of the time though, was your like base where I'm not sure if they call it the, your, the base though. Is that, was that, it was, that was in Kuwait, right? Or most of the time I was, I was based in Kuwait. Yeah. Most of the time you're based in Kuwait. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. That's crazy, man. That's Kuwait. awesome to hear though. Yeah. I loved it, man. I, well, <laughs> well, yeah. I didn't love the weather. You know, <laughs> I didn't I love my, my, my first few sandstorms. You ever see that opening scene from The Mummy where there's the wall coming at you? I always, you know, I watched the movie long before I went over. I was like, oh, man, that looks so cool. I wonder if it's really like that. And uh, my very <laughs> first one was one of the biggest in Southwest Asia, which a lot of people don't think of the Middle East as Southwest Asia, but that's what it is. And uh, I can remember looking out at the horizon because the sirens started going off on post. And everybody, I see everybody who's been there longer than me. I'm the, I'm the new guy. And they're all like, oh, you know, I see the schmogs going up. Everybody's wrapping up. Goggles are going on and they're heading indoors and taping up seams. And, you know, if you had a you had a tent, you know, usually an eight man hooch. Everybody's trying to tape up the seams, turn right. up the ASPs, <laughs> taping up on sealing everything. And I'm looking out, man, and I hear there's a sandstorm coming. I'm part of the, the emergency services on post. So I have access to Army Weather, Army Intel, and they're feeding us the info. They're like, get ready. And this thing came in, and I remember it was like straight out of the mummy. And I mean, minus the big face that opened up, this thing just rolled in, and it went from daylight to struggling to see your hand in your face. And uh, it was intense. Turns out that was one of the, I mean, whether it was true or not, I didn't, I didn't fact check it. But everybody on post was saying at the time on Camp Patriot uh, Road, which is the main drag there, that. Uh, you know, this is the biggest sandstorm we've had in Southeast Asia. And 
I, I don't know how many years it was, a lot, a lot of years. Wow. And it covered the north half, north half of Saudi Arabia. It covered all of Kuwait and the south half, south half of Iraq, and then a good portion of the Persian Gulf. And I think it may have reached over to Afghanistan across the Gulf, but I'm not even sure. All I could tell you is I had a whole new respect for that's for real. After that, I saw a bunch of others that were smaller. But right. Wow. That's crazy. It was crazy. I'll never forget that. Yeah. So what do you, well, what do you, I mean, what, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, no. Yeah. So, um, you, you, when you finally got out there, right. And, uh, how, how long before, um, I, I, and I explained this to you before, like it took a long time for us to like, you know, um, get into being out in the desert. How long did it take you to finally acclimate to everything that was out there with the weather? Like, you know, it gets freezing cold during the night and then during the day it's 132 yep. degrees. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Jeez, man. I mean, I can remember, I can remember, I think the highest temps I experienced in my four years, it got up around 140, 141. Um, my dad, who was uh, OIF, who was there before me, was there, I think he was at, at BDAD when it hit the record, which was like 150 or 151. I didn't see that. My dad did. But I definitely saw 140, 141. Right, yeah. And it's the kind of heat, like, you know, when you open up the oven and you get, you just get that blast of heat in your face. That's what it's like. And if you try to breathe through your nose, like you're not, don't even try it. You're just not thinking about it. I can remember it burning my nose. You ever get that sensation? Oh my it's God. So hot. It's just like, and not like burning, you know, you're getting blisters and screaming and your face is going to catch on fire, but burning like you're like, Oh God, that's, and you start right. mouth breathing. You start mouth breathing because yeah. it sucks. Yeah. And uh, so much sand and dust going in your it's, face. Yeah. yeah I it's, can't even imagine that. It took me a long time. And, uh, you know, what he says, too, too, is is true, because during the day, I mean, it's just blazing and everybody's screaming, drink fluids, drink fluids, yep. drink fluids, heat stroke, heat exhaustion. That was probably my number one, number one call while I was over there with soldiers who were up. I was up every morning, 0405, morning PT, Reveille, and the day goes on. And uh, we'd have guys down at 05, 06 with heat stroke. Wow, and once you hit yeah, heat stroke, yeah. you're you're done. You get shipped home. That's the end of your tour. That's it. And uh, they don't play around with that because once you have heat stroke, the uh, you you your brain can't really register what when it's too hot again. So right. because that part in the thalamus can't register what's too hot and warn you. They know if you go back out in the field having already had heat stroke, you're going to have no warning the next time, and you're going to drop sooner. So you get shipped out. Ugh. Yeah, but I can hundred percent. Yep. It's, it's wild, man. And then at night you go in, you spend all day sweating your guts out. You know, maybe you got a shower if you're lucky and maybe it's more than a canister on top of a little shack with a pull string, <laughs> but uh, you know, maybe you got a trailer with some showers and you know, whatever. And uh, you get over there, you get your shower, you get back to the, get back to your tent. You got, I mean, our tent, we had like three AC units in it during the day. It was still 110. Yeah. And then, uh, at night though, we get out and those flaps would open up. And we had the external entrance with the wood door that would yes, shut. Yes. And still, man, the sand and the cold air, and you just burn it up during the day that's and it. just and shivering at night. And it, it, was, it was ridiculous. And that's so, if you weren't sleeping in the open desert. Sleeping on a on a Humvee that's being kept on for a couple hours at night was a commodity. It was like sleeping inside of the four seasons. <laughs> Let's just yeah, leave it I'll at tell that. You, you know what my, one of my, my other busy calls was all the time was troops who would turn around and they'd fall asleep, whether oh. it was soldiers or Marines. They'd fall asleep trying to sleep near the engine block to, to stay warm. But the guys who would go around and sleep near the exhaust or even just downwind to it but too close, I'd get calls for, for carbon poisoning. Wow, that's crazy. Like, you can't yeah, I mean, like I would imagine, like some someone like myself, you know, like the only thing we ever really hear about or think about is like people like dealing with like IEDs and you know just like the you know traveling convoys and things that get hit. You never think about like the the weird obscure things like the the extreme heat and cold and the you know all that stuff that people have to contend with as well too. You know, I mean, it just. Ugh, yeah, couldn't imagine, man. A lot well, of respect for you guys on that. Thank you, sir. Um, yeah, sorry. So, yeah, so... Um, hey, brother. 
really, really want to uh, take a second here to thank everyone on the chat room right now. Everyone's like talking and going in and out and like having a great time. Yeah, they, everybody's like talking a lot right yeah, now on the uh, chat room. Austin, everyone's yeah. saying thank you for your service, which is amazing. And for those of you who thank me, thank you again um, for, for those nice words. Um, but yeah, I mean, like the, the chat room is going insane and we, we see you guys, you know, um, and we are very thankful that you're on here. So um, from one hot suit in the desert to another... Talk a little bit about your, uh, <laughs> your, uh, <laughs> let's talk a little bit about what, um, you went through in, uh, how'd you get into the Power Ranger scene, man? Like, how did that come about for you? Dude, it was a $20 bet. Um, what? <laughs> I was, yeah, I mean, I was in high school. I wasn't an actor. I was a junior. Um, I was, you know, football during the day. I was just trying to, to work into my first studio and it was, uh, it was a good friend of mine who had the, had the footage the square footage. He's like, yeah, you want to teach out here? So I was bringing people in. I was teaching. I didn't have any huge studio. I was just trying to establish myself. So I was in, in sports, in the studio or in school. And I hated school. Um, <laughs> but my master told me flat out, he's like, you don't come back with straight A's. He goes, your belt's mine. You're done. And that was from day one. And, uh, and he wouldn't, yeah, mine too. Over, yeah. He wouldn't black anybody over the age of 16. So if you weren't 16, you could not test for your black. Wow. And that's, that's just what he was. And, and to this day, I actually completely agree with it. But anyway, um, so long story short, that's what I was doing at the time. I was going to Sunny Hills High School in Whittier, California. And uh, I started, I met up with this acting coach. His name was Bob Bancroft. And the uh, guy was great. And he was like, yeah, dude, you know what? You should be an actor. And I was like, uh, no, no. Don't like cameras. Don't like big groups of people. I have no interest. <laughs> no, really, I'm telling you. He goes, you got to look. You could do it. You know, blah, blah, blah. So finally, he goes, look. He goes, worst case scenario, you can come in, take a couple of my classes. You'll meet my students, and that'll be another source for you to pull more students from and build up your classes. And I was like, <laughs> okay, all right, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll with that. And so I went in, and, you know, I, I think the first classes I took were commercial classes and you know they taught me about what colors not to wear on camera which red is one of the first ones they say of course <laughs> they're like don't wear red and, uh, so long story short it, i was doing that and i hadn't been there long picked up a few students learned a few things and he starts he starts asking me, he's like dude i heard about this audition they're advertising in the newspaper and i think you should go you would knock it out they're looking for teenagers with attitude i was like what are you talking about, man? You saying I got to have attitude? What are you talking about? You know, come on, man. And, uh, and and I'm still a teenager with attitude. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. we all are. I ended up after three weeks, he nagged me, nagged me, nagged me. He's like, you should go. You should go. And I, I wouldn't do it. And he goes, look, it's a two hour drive to LA. I'll bet you $20 if you go. You won't be wasting your time. And I'm thinking at the time, gas was 89 cents a gallon. I was like, gas? I got bread and bologna for a week. <laughs> Okay, I'll, I'll take your money. Let's go. So I went in, and it was, uh, they had advertised in the newspaper. It's a cattle call. So anybody that can read it literally can show up and take a shot at it. And I went in, and the first audition was martial arts. There wasn't a paper, there wasn't a monologue, which I had no idea how to do anyway. And they were like, you know, how many of you know martial arts? And there's just a butt ton of guys and girls. Everybody's looking around. You can always tell the guys that had no idea because they're like, you know, any yeah. other guys who have any form of real practice are looking over going, he's not going to be here long or oh, she's wow. not going to be here long. Wow. And uh, they called us forward. I did martial arts. It was with Katie Wallen, who, you know, I'm not even 18 yet. And I'm looking at Katie Wallen, who is just this beautiful blonde and the sweetest girl. I instantly fell in love with her. Steve, <laughs> did you audition for her? Yeah, I auditioned with Katie as well, too. Yeah, I know what you, I know what you're saying. Yeah, she yeah. was a really sweet lady, too. Yeah, I, I instantly fell in love with her. And she became, you know, kind of like a mom figure for me. And uh, so she set me up, gave me some insight. I did the first audition. And they were like, you know, okay. I was completely uninterested. Sent me home, drove the two hours back. And I'm thinking I'm going to call Bob up and be like, hey, man, bring me your 20 bucks, dude. And <laughs> message on my answering machine back when we really had those. And it was, can you come back tomorrow at five? Wow. And five auditions later, uh, part of my process was, was with uh, Tadashi, who had done all the choreography for Rising Sun with Wesley Snipes. And, oh, yeah, and, right. You know, he, was, he was awesome. He was an eighth pound of Waterloo. And uh, I was completely intimidated by him, which I should have been. 
at 18. And uh, I ended up having to choreograph a fight with him that went down in the fr- in front of the heads of Fox and the, the heads of Saban. They all came to this big room upstairs, and that was like the final group audition. Right, and yeah. Five auditions later, you know, we got grouped into our group, and chemistry was there, and wow. the rest is history. That's so great, man. Yeah. Well, you guys certainly paved the way, that's for sure, you know? And uh, yeah, my audition process was a little different because um, they were in a time crunch. They had, you know, they had they had shut production down to find us, so um, they moved us through a little quicker, you know? Um, which I guess in one sense I feel kind of grateful for because if they had had months and months and months to to find people, they might, you know, they might not have picked me, you know what I mean? Like in that sense, I, you know, because I feel like they were in a time constraint, you know, they didn't get as many p- chances to look at as many people as they wanted in this big casting call. So, uh, I'll u- use that to my advantage, yeah, <laughs> in sense, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, it's cool though, because at, at that point, you know, Austin had, you, you guys had already, had already left. And so when we got on the show, even though it looked like we were on, on camera together, we never were right. Like they ended up having to use like people that looked like Austin and Walter and, and, uh, and Twee to, uh, yeah. you know, to do like these behind the, behind, over the shoulder camera shots and things like that. So they use people, as backs a lot to do a lot of these scenes and then they would intercut old footage and stuff. Actually, Austin and I, we didn't even really actually, I mean, we met each other because you know, we were all friends. Everybody was friends. So even though Austin and, and Walter and them had left the show, um, we were all still friends and everybody still hung out. So I was actually going to house parties at Austin and Walter's <laughs> house in Glendale uh, yeah. all the time. And I, I remember the first time I actually ever met you face to face. It was at it was at one of your house parties. And yeah. and it was right before the movie was about to come out. And uh, you'd give me some good advice. You were like, yeah, man, hey, look, the movie's going to come out. It's going to blow you up really big. So just be ready for all that, you know, because I was not ready for the big whirlwind of things that were about to happen, you know, with the movie tour and stuff like that. So Austin definitely prepared me for that. I appreciate that. And, and, and I was appreciate, I was so appreciative too, that you were gracious, you know what I mean? Because most people would say, Oh, this is the guy that took your job. You know, you would think that guy might be a dick to you, but Austin wasn't like that at all. You know what I mean? Like obviously he knows it wasn't personal or anything like that. So, um, you know, I was fearful that maybe he might be that way when I was going to meet him at first. And he was actually really cool, you know, and gave me some good solid advice. So I always, never really thanked you for that and i am doing that now brother i appreciate it <laughs> applauses yeah. let's throw some applauses up on the chat room man. yeah That's exactly <laughs> so yeah. there, you know it wasn't it was never steve's fault you know i chose to leave the show and uh you know he right. got, he's a guy that earned the part when i left so i was if anything I well was, right yeah exactly like, you know yeah because i mean sometimes we get people you know they'll be like oh yeah yeah that's not really your role you know what i mean i'm like well maybe not but if you were in my shoes you would have taken the job too right <laughs> you know what i mean like that's what i try to say to people you know and yeah, it's right, like right. you know you want to just try to like do your best that you can with the situation that you're given you know and that's right. what i felt like i tried to do um but it wasn't until we started doing the zeo season and then that's when austin and i were actually got to be on camera together for real yeah. you know yeah yeah, and I like that. Uh, there was that episode that we did uh, where the one where I thought, oh, oh, uh, Jason's back. Uh, and then Bulk and Skull were making me like self conscious, making my character self conscious as to whether or not I was going to be replaced and stuff. And uh, they, they were messing with my head, essentially, you know. Um, I, I mean, I don't know if there was some true, was some real life thoughts in that, you know, but, you know, I could probably have pulled from my own fears about that, <laughs> you know, and, and portrayed that. <laughs> In a it sense, was never talked about on my side. I can tell you that. We never, say that again. Yeah, it was never talked about on my side. They never once said to me, "Hey, man, if you're willing, right. you know, we're going to kick Steve out and bring you back." That was never <laughs> said. Yeah, I know. They, yeah, they didn't, nobody ever said that to me either. But hey, you know, sometimes people yeah. people don't say something, and the next That's thing you true. know, you're gone. <laughs> you know, the, the one rumor I did hear that was running big was that uh, I guess it was David Yost who was going to be the goal, or that a lot of people thought it was going to be David or. Yeah, or well, and then I heard it was. Yeah, I mean, they even have they even had Brad Hawkins voicing the the Gold Ranger yeah. when we didn't know who it was going to be, you know, for a while, you know. It's like yeah. they, I think it was maybe up in the air what they wanted to do, even up until, you know, just oh, a few, started. yeah, until halfway through the season before you came back came out on there, you know. Yeah. So who knows, you cool. know? I mean, they, 
back. Yeah, it was all good time. I mean, they they, they kept us in the dark a lot too. You know, it's not like they they laid out the whole season for us ahead of time and saying this 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 is going to happen. Oh, you dude, know. it was the same with us. Yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, sometimes on the day you'd show up and be like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm reading a whole new story here than I'd got yep. from the week before, <laughs> you know? So that happened a lot. And that happened on the show and on the movie a lot, too. They were always making script changes in the movie. Yeah, that was my film, too, the same way with it. Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, so you guys were there like six months for that one. It, well, yeah. I mean, well, that, well, that's the thing. With the movie, they we, we had filmed almost the entire movie you know we were, we were supposed to be there for in australia for like two two months or a little bit more than two months or whatever and that was from like halloween to christmas they around that time we were going to be filming and we filmed and we filmed most all of it and then they said all right we're gonna take our holiday break and when we came back from our holiday break they essentially sat us down and said look we're we don't like the the direction the movie's going with the filming and everything like that we're doing a, we're gonna do some little bit of recasting and we're going to reshoot the whole entire thing you know um and for me i was okay with it at least i thought because i'm like oh okay well i'm you know i'm getting paid more to do the movie than i was getting paid to do the show which is cool and i was like oh we're gonna get this paid more for more weeks so i was fine with it but what i what i didn't realize is that we also had a tv schedule that we had to do so not only were we filming the movie but we'd also have to film the tv show while that was going on as well too and that was grueling you couldn't believe like how hard that was so um yeah that was crazy yeah they so were sure. never shy about uh, absolutely destroying whoever was on their payroll like uh, what you got two hours of sleep last night Great. <laughs> yeah back to work yeah, well, I mean, but you know what? It was all for a bigger goal, and we all understood that, so we had to do it. But it was certainly difficult, you know, especially for somebody who had never been in that kind of a grueling schedule before, you know, had never done any acting before. That was something that you're not used to, and it was it was something to definitely uh, overcome for sure. But Austin, like you've been doing all kinds of stuff, all kinds of different things, like uh, since you've left Power Rangers, you know. I mean, aside from you know all of your service with the uh, with you know, overseas and everything. Um, so I know I people are going on the feed and saying, don't forget to talk about Trace Leches and don't forget to talk about this and that and this and that and this and that. So we've got a list of stuff here. Maybe you can, yeah. you know, give us some details on it. But actually, since I said, said Trace Leches, why don't you, uh, can you, maybe you can tell us what that one is. That's one of your newer projects, right? Yeah, that's, uh, so I shot that film in uh, Baton Rouge at uh, John Schneider Studios. It's John's on his property. He's got quite a bit of property down there. Right. And for those that don't know John Schneider, he was uh, the, from the, one of the original guys from the Dukes of Hazard. Yeah, he, um, was, he was a blonde guy who drove the General Lee. <laughs> yeah, he was, was it, yeah, he was Bo, right? Or was he Luke? No, he was Luke. Or was he, no, he was Bo. He was Bo. Yeah, yeah he was Bo. And, uh, and he's a musician. He's got albums. He's been on, uh, I think it was Supergirl or Supernatural. I think it's Supergirl. I mean, he's still on a lot of current stuff. Yeah, he but, does. But yeah. That, he's just he's, he's an awesome guy. Like he's, yeah. he's one of those, this is where I am, this is where I'm at, take it or leave it. Yeah, I've met him several times, too, at the, at the Comic-Cons and stuff. He is a really nice guy, really genuine, real down-to-earth, so that's cool. So what is uh, what is uh, Trace Leches about? So Trace Leches is uh, a film that he wrote, wrote, produced, directed, and then I came out to, to work in, co-star, and support his son, who is one of the three leads, uh, and his son is on the spectrum in the world of autism. John heard I was doing work in that same world with something else, which I am. And, uh, you know, it was one of the reasons we hit it off. I came out to film and he goes, yeah, we're, we're looking for a role for a cop and we need a cop who, and he started, he sent me the script and I, I fell over laughing because this cop is just kind of, he's an idiot. He's a cool right. idiot. And he right. finds out that his wife, whose name is Tiny. is a big woman. <laughs> there ain't nothing tiny about her. Right. Uh, is uh, he finds out that his wife, he comes home from work and he's, you know, snuggling up next to her and blah, blah, blah. And like, hey, you know, he's getting all turned on. She's half asleep and it's rated R. So, I mean, if you got issues with this, maybe <laughs> whatever. Um, you know, and he's trying to be all, you know, sexy time. And she whispers the name of another man. Well, that sends him off the charts. Oh, right. And okay. So I spend the whole movie trying to find the guy. That is, uh, you know, the name mentioned wife. in in the throws. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, well, and so this whole search, every time I search, something horrifically funny 
leaves this cop completely dejected like the moron that he is. And he just can't get to the guy who's doing it or one of the guys who did it, which is one of the three leads. All and, right. Uh, it's just stupid can't get out of stupid's way between the three right. and me. So you're, you're essentially Roscoe P. Coltrane from, from Dukes of Hazzard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who, was yeah. The, who was the cop that was always chasing down Bo and Luke too. <laughs> but well, he was I, also a bumbling kind of... He told me, he told me, he goes, he goes, yeah, there's Roscoe. He goes, but picture more uh, uh, Smokey and the Bandit, uh, Jackie Gleason. Oh, okay. He goes, he goes, picture more Gleason. Is it Jackie Gleason? I think it was Gleason. And, uh, you know, it was just kind of that, you know, well, I told you, blah, blah, blah. You know, right. sort of thing. And I was like, okay. So it was a ton of fun. It's rated R. It'll be coming out. Uh, you can see the trailer at John Schneider Studios on YouTube. Yeah, and we're actually showing, kind of showing the trailer like yeah, the, yeah, the on trailer. Twitch right now, live as you're talking about it. We're showing it so people kind of seeing what it, what's going on with it. I've, I'm looking over here at it. It looks pretty cool. It looks shot very well, too. Yeah. So, um, who, who, yeah, who directed that? John. Oh, John directed it too. Okay. I didn't know. Okay. Yeah, wow. He's, very he's cool. Yeah. Kind of he's very good. Produced, directed. He has his own team down there. Like we had a great time. Everything was cracking. There was no, no BS. People were right. on their market. They knew their lines. It was a pleasure to work with. That's fantastic, man. Good for you. Yeah. yeah that's great. Awesome. So when did you say that might be coming out? Pretty soon? Later this year. I'm hoping. Okay. Later, but he hasn't given me a hard line. Oh, nice. Cool. Well, we will definitely look forward to seeing you in that, man. Um, and uh, sorry, I, I, Alex has got all yeah, kinds of, course, of yeah, things got, he wants to ask, here, different man. ones he wants to ask you about. Let's, let's, and I'm going to go down the list here, man. Let's talk real quickly about A Walk With Grace. Can you uh, let us know a little bit about A Walk With Grace? I, I want everyone yeah. in the chat room and who's listening to this later on to kind of like, you know, un understand all this amazing work you've been, you've been, you know, gracing us with. So go ahead, man. Yeah. Okay. So uh, when I first came came home uh, from my my last station, I was uh, a buddy of mine through my my good friend Walter Jones, Zach Black Ranger. He reaches out to a friend of ours who was a PA on the set uh, or second AD. Sorry, he was a second AD on set when I was on the show. So mm -hmm. we've known each other 26, 27 years. His name is Nick Kellis. He goes, Yeah, man, I'm writing. I'm direct, and I've worked on Kim McQueen's, LA Inc. You know, he'd done a bunch of other TV stuff, uh, Brightzilla. And all kinds of stuff. So he'd been around the block and he'd done some directing too. He goes, I've written a script, you know, now that you're back, bro, would you take a look at this? I'd love to write you in. So he writes me in. I get a character named Dwayne. Dwayne is a, uh, a vet with PTSD who kind of ends up, he's, he's the, he's a heavy supporting role, more like a third or third or fourth lead. Uh, right. As, as a friend of mine would say, but long story short, uh, the two, it's a faith-based romantic drama comedy um so it's pretty good for the kids i think there's one cuss word in it uh there is one innuendo about intimacy so it depends <laughs> on your sensitivities right and, so it's uh, keeping it pg for the most yeah. part and yeah. you got uh you got uh, i see the the picture we're showing up on twitch right now a little promo pic uh you're sitting you're standing the opposite of uh stephen baldwin and that's oh, uh, the yeah stephen yeah. baldwin that's cool man yeah and that yeah stephen was there we uh that was a scene in the factory where like I'm done, I'm done talking. He plays a bank. He plays, he plays the representative of a bank that is trying to buy out the factory that myself and half the town work at. Oh, and okay. He's, he's trying to take our factory, which means our jobs, our livelihoods, our retirement, <laughs> and we're pissed. And I'm the lead of the group that uh, that is opposed to this, the union. Of course, yeah, yeah. That and, makes sense. Uh, right about there, and you see the cop's badge in the background. Right about there is where I step straight up to his face. And I'm my character's ready to throw down, and right. he's he's just a slime ball, and he right. just kind of looks down and he's grinning and he whispers to the officer, you know, I don't even say a word. He just whispers to the officer without even looking at the cop because he didn't care about him either. He's like, we have a problem here, officer. <laughs> and I look at the cop. The cop looks at me, and we know each other because we're from the same small town, right? And like, and he goes, no. <laughs> and I just looked at him. I look at Stephen. I look at Grace, who's the lead, and Grace is just like, don't. And so I turn around and, you know. Right. Wow, that's, that's great. So uh, how how is it, like, for you doing, like, these uh, different kind of roles that are such, that are so different, say, from the character of Jason, uh, from Jason and Lee Scott? Yeah. I love it. And, uh, I mean, I think that any actor that can't diversify, that can't play more than, you know, the sum of his first role, either isn't trying or B sucks. Right. 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 Yeah. That's, 
And it's so hard sometimes to break away from that as it is, you know? So yeah. you feel like you want to welcome those kinds of roles as much as yeah. you possibly can to yeah, show I that love, diversity. Yeah. yeah. I love it. I love the challenge, you know, playing the, the dumb cop and then uh, playing, you know, the factory, the factory liaison, you know, rebel without a cause. And I'm like, and I'm the wrestling coach for the town, the assistant wrestling coach. And I'm angry. Like I got issues. So you start out hating my character in the beginning and then you begin to understand him by the end. And uh, so that was, it was a great challenge. And uh, I look forward to that. You can find that one on Amazon right now. You can get it. Um, oh, good. Okay. Yeah. And it's called, and it's called, uh, uh, tell a us again, Grace. A, wa- a Walk a with walk Grace. With okay, Grace. cool. Yeah. Yeah. And we can, you can, a walk with grace you can find it on amazon right away so if you guys like want to see more of austin right after we're done with this thing by all means jump on there and check it out if you haven't already um but there's lots of ways that people can 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 connect with you because you've got like uh you've got vlogs you've got a merchandise website and uh you've got all kinds of other um websites as well too so um i see you got all that background stuff in the background there uh, behind you uh you you essentially are like your own merchandise store as well too. You've got all kinds of, of things that people can get from you as well. Maybe you can tell us a little bit more about your, your website uh, that you yeah, have. Yeah, for sure. Online store. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, www.austinstjohn.biz. And uh, I've got everything from, you know, your traditional signed autograph power range rate by 10 to uh, when that, when hot items come in, like super hot toys uh, I'll get in a shipment. Usually I'll put those up and they're gone. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Less yeah. Less than 24 hours. They disappear. They disappear. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know I've then, done some stuff where I've helped some people sell some stuff and they go pretty yeah. fast. Yeah. Go yeah. It's, a it's, hours, it's they're gone. Great. Um, I do shout outs. You can get autographs. I have uh, action figures. I have stuff like that. I just talked to a, a good friend of mine who is an official sponsor for Marvel Ooh. who sent me his entire jewelry line. So I have, Marvel sponsored official jewelry wow. on my website. If you go to home and hit the drop down, uh, just go to what's your passion jewelry and you can see an entire lineup of, uh, of Marvel jewelry. From oh, okay. So it's not everything that is not necessarily all power ranger related. There's yeah. other different, Oh, there's other genres on in, in, in the mix there too. Oh, that's good. Traditionally wow. it's been power. Ranger. I, I'm now expanding. So I've got some Marvel. I'm talking to some Harry Potter folks. I hope to have them on soon. Oh, talking nice. To, uh, okay. Health, yeah. uh, health supplement lines. I'm looking at. I'm looking at all kinds of stuff. So it's expanding. God, good for you, man. That's awesome, bro. I, I didn't yeah. even realize that myself. So that, I think that's pretty cool. I have to definitely see what you have on there for sure. Yeah, um, yeah. And people, people, you guys can go online as well too. Um, and we'll make sure we post it up on Twitch the link so people can uh, can can click to that as well um, and get stuff. Um, which other ones uh, are we are we talking about, Alex? There was yeah. The, so uh, and we also have your FanWord uh, company as well, right? Tell us a little bit about FanWord. Did I say that right? FanWord, right? Yeah. Yeah, FanWord. Uh, so F A N W A R D, FanWord.com. Uh, you can check them out. I do vlogs and I talk about things in detail there that I haven't put out anywhere else and anywhere near the same detail. And it's essentially, and it's not my company. It's uh, a dear friend of mine. Okay. It's his company. But, you know, you look at things like Cameo and you look at all these other places where, you know, you, you do a, a voice shout out, things like that. But mm-hmm. you're always under the structure, the time limits the financial end of whoever owns Cameo or whoever owns whatever right. else. And Cameo does some great stuff. I have nothing against them at all. FanWord, uh, we just brought in Jeremy Sumter, who played uh, Peter Pan with oh, wow. uh, against in the film with Hugh Jackman. So, and we're very slowly, at our pace, bringing in content that actors, uh, the people who happen to be actors, choose to put up. So I could do a three-minute video on what's in my wallet. What do I take with me when I go to the airport to go to St. Louis versus the airport when I go to Saigon? Right. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so points of interest, details. I could talk about, you know, how I got the role. I could talk about how the gold, the, all the details for the Gold Ranger come back. I could, I've got videos in there where I'm literally just roasting a pork butt with uh, <laughs> some Latin, you know, spices, and point it all up. And, oh, okay. uh, you know, I got, so the video content is across the board. But it surrounds both my personal life and my personal view of things that are famous in the public and some things that aren't. There's other videos where, like, I discuss who my top heroes were growing up. 
or right. who I think are top rated today, DC, Marvel, you know, blah, blah, blah. And some of the videos are free, but it's a subscription network. So you go in and you, you pay to access the videos. We have another model on there, uh, Lauren, another model. She's the model. She's gorgeous. And uh, so the guys love her. <laughs> but, uh, and she talks about things in her life, you know. Uh, so, you you know, and we set the rates realistic, one ninety nine to two ninety nine a month, depending on whether you do annual or whatnot. Right. And uh, I put out 26 videos per year, high quality. Fanward does all the filming. They do all the editing. They bring all the equipment. All I have to do That's is awesome. put the content, take it back, edit it, load it up. And uh, the fans get high quality video. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. That's really cool, man. Yeah. And it's a, and it's a one-on-one thing. So like, you know, they're getting something that's uh, specifically from you and it's something personal. It's not nothing that you're just doing it just right. to shoot the S, you know? Yeah. Well, and you know, one of the, one of the other key things I love about these guys is I have, I have say, I can't tell them after we scrub it, after we do an entire video, scrub the whole thing. Right. But I have say as an actor, which is not common, Steve could tell you, you know, you can't often go walking into production after things are shot and go, Hey, you know what? That really sucked. Would you mind if we redo that? They're gonna right. Be, uh, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. You don't see it. Sometimes you don't get that save. That's for sure. Yeah. So on fan word, I can go in and I have a limited range. I can be like, look, out of this 10 minutes or three minutes, that 15, 20 seconds, can we either drop it or cut it a little different? And they're open, they're resourceful. And they're like, yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. And they make me happy. I keep them happy. And it's, it's cool stuff. Yeah, that's really well. Cool. I mean, it's just one of the ways, you know, that Austin and actually all of my all of my Power Ranger family, you know, um, we are ones that realize, you know, that without our fans, we're really nothing, you know. So these people that support us all the time, and we try so many different avenues to give back to them. So Austin is just another example of that with all the different things that he does, um, you know, with autism and when things he does with his websites and and just trying to put other content out and stuff, you know, just keeping the people entertained because you know the fans as we've discovered through social media really just want to be a part of our life somehow some way you know what i mean and so um you know to be able to give them stuff like this and to be able to give them all kinds of other you know things just besides instagram or twitter or whatever you know um to make them feel a little bit you know closer to us you know is, is something that all of my ranger friends have always been very good at which is why we all try to travel as much as we can and meet as many fans as possible and you know do the video shout outs and all that kind of stuff like that so austin is uh, very very good about that as well so uh, we're always um, grateful for that you know yeah. some people can be some people can be dicks. <laughs> yeah, no, you're yeah. right. Yeah. And and like to stay on the topic of fans, um, we'd like to uh, pretty much give um, away our prize of the week here to one of our uh, loyal fans. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Every so, week we give away a prize, and maybe we can convince Austin to give something from his uh, his stash. Uh, maybe we can get some give something away to some yeah. some one of the listeners from this week or next week. If that'd be cool. Yeah. Um, and we have one winner that we're going to announce, and what we're going to do is we will give this uh, one away uh, this time around. We've got a actually this is a Jason Lee Scott. This one's not a Rocky, so I might have to drive 15 minutes over to your house, Austin, and have you sign this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Austin and I live like 15 minutes away from each other just so you yeah. guys know I probably should have told him to come over here and sit right here and, but then we wouldn't have seen his awesome background um, but this one actually is a Jason Lee Scott one it's one of the uh, Super Mega Force uh, collection but uh, this is the one we're going to give away this week so uh, if you can tell us who the winner of that sure, one is sure yeah so before I even say who the winner is the way that you guys are able to be part of our uh, our giveaways and all of the other great things that we do uh, behind the scenes is by joining our Patreon by going to patreon.com com slash uh the fantastic duo show and you know what it's a great place to be we have a lot of people on there that are always chatting back and forth you get to know who the guests are before everyone else does like there's a lot going on behind the scenes here so um that's one way to do it and uh, all the links uh will be put on after this but our winner for today the red ranger uh jason uh doll we like to call him dolls here on the show <laughs> the, the doll <laughs> is uh is it's a doll come on it is don't try doll. to butch yeah, it up right. as an action I'm figure it's, it's a doll i'm sorry is it's, okay. good? It's, 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 a, it's a doll that boys can play with that's fine yeah there you anyway go, go ahead <laughs> it's a brand new patreon uh just randomly thrown in there guys by the way this is all i throw it on a random generator and a brand just, new patreon or a brand new patreon subscriber Patreon subscriber yeah oh happened. thank you okay yeah. cool all right yeah go ahead drum roll, drum roll. Drum roll. Drum roll. Drum roll. Drum roll. Luis luciano you just won 
a red Power Ranger Lord. Nice, so congrats. And uh, you congrats. know, throw some uh, collapse and stuff for oh. you on here. You know, it'll be it'll be cool, man. You know, like uh, we like giving. Well, Steve loves giving back. That's one thing that he loves to do. So, um, why and not? I could add a course on my guests by putting them on the spot live too. Hey, uh, you want to give some away too? <laughs> yeah. <all right. laughs> No, nah, that's cool. I only asked that because I knew Austin would be cool with this. So, uh, uh, yeah, congratulations to uh, Lewis. Lewis. It's yeah. just said, yeah, Lewis. Congratulations, Lewis. You got the Red Ranger action hero. We're gonna make sure we uh, give you uh, get that to you soon. So uh, we'll get in contact with you how to how to get that to you. But we appreciate that. Um, yeah, and so, uh, go ahead. Yeah. So while we're on here, before um, you know, we got about ten minutes left. Really quickly, uh, Austin. Tomorrow in the UK, your Beast Morpher episode uh, gets released. Uh, are you excited oh, for already that? that soon, huh? Well, I didn't even know that. I've yes. been waiting. I know when it was going to be released myself. Yeah. So tomorrow, um, uh, supposedly, uh, you, uh, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers team, joins uh, the Dino Charge team in the <laughs> Beast Morphers uh, episode. Obviously, the spoilers are are starting to roll because people in the UK are like taking videos of their TV and putting them up on on. Uh, online so today you know there yeah. was one episode and it's it continuing to move how excited are you to be back uh on there and you've been back plenty of times but like you know you are getting once again sure. put in front of millions of kids and people that um you know grew up with you and now are getting to get to know you you know all over again like the, their parents are like oh my god i used to watch them and now the kids are watching you you know you know it, it uh kind of first off it was awesome i got a call from the ep and we spoke and he's like hey would you consider i was like i don't know send me a script he's like yeah well we haven't actually written it yet you know <laughs> naturally yeah naturally like, but if you're interested we'll you know we'll put something together i was like okay you know he goes you come to new zealand for a week or two you film and uh you know you'd be out of there that quick and uh so long story short, I agreed, put me under non-disclosure, sent me uh, the package. I read it over. And I was like, okay, you know what? It's been 18 years since my last return. No problem. I'll do that. Wow. And so I went out, I got to meet the new cast, the new crew. Uh, the guys were great. New Zealand was incredible. Puha yeah. Beach. And I mean, yeah, Dark. that's for sure. I can attest to that too. New Zealand is very cool. With lots of great like places, you know, visually, you know. Yeah, it was incredible. I, I had a great time being there. I uh, shot out my stuff. Uh, everyone was professional. And, I, you know, it, it was kind of a time travel, you know, because I'm sitting there and uh, I'm looking at these 18, 19, some of them in their 20s, you know, year olds. And I'm going, man, I, I remember being that age as wow. the lead. I remember being that age, you know, with mm. and, and some of uh, the second unit DP, Sean, uh, or director of photography, this guy who sits behind a camera, for those of you who aren't familiar, he was still there from my day on second unit. Uh, one of the stunt guys I, wow. that I, uh, I fought with back then uh, was there. So there was a few faces that were still there from my time, including Chip. Yeah. And it was, it was crazy. And Chip started as a PA. Like he was a PA 27 years ago now. And he just now left the show as EP and is back in the U S I'm like, man, I mean, there's the American dream. That guy started at the bottom. Busted, yeah. Worked his way top. all the way up, man. Yeah. So, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. It was awesome. It was, it was cool. It was good to see all those people again. Some people I hadn't seen for like 20 years, you know, which is pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, I imagine that was a good feeling to go back there. Um, awesome. but yeah, you, you get that. I remember, I remember what you're saying, like when you're looking at the younger crew and you're like, God, I remember, was I ever that young? And I, yep, I was. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I was, ever that young. <laughs> was I, I little, ever that young? Wish I'd had a little more time before I went back to film. Cause it happened in a blink. But uh, I would love to have had about three months to just crush the gym. But, you know. Oh, right. Yeah. They brought you back too soon. <laughs> I was like, oh, They're like, can you be here in 28 days? I was like, oh. so I got 28 <laughs> days to do two a days and eat broccoli and rice. Okay. Right. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's how it went. I was definitely not ripped, but I had a great time going back. Dude, that fan. It don't matter, man. The fans just love you, dude. It don't, you know what I mean? Like, you, we upset, uh, we as people obsess about that kind of stuff, but everybody, 
as your fans, they just see you one way, man. You know what I mean? And like, yep. that's, yep. and that, and that's what it is. You know what I mean? So they're just happy to have you back, man, for sure. That's awesome. So, uh, so, um, I think, um, I don't know if Austin is up for it, but one of the things we like to do in the last few minutes of the show is we like to have a little, uh, trivia, uh, like a little trivia battle, so to speak. We'd like to do eighties, nineties, trivia, pop culture stuff. Um, and we just, you know, uh, Alex will read off the questions and you and I buzz we We'll, we'll 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 battle yet again once again only this time we'll face off uh against <laughs> each other and uh so basically alex will call out a question um and then it, we just say buzz whoever buzzes in first then gets the chance to answer the question whoever gets the five first wins or whatever you know best sure three or five or whatever okay. we call it um so best if you're down yeah, to play let's play uh what are we calling this by the way so this what is- are we calling this are we calling this the uh the fantastic quiz or what <laughs> yeah the fantastic quiz this this week's uh, trivia is 80s movie quotes uh, i'm pretty sure you guys watch a lot of movies in the oh, 80s. 80s oh god okay nice. look at this all right oh god oh, okay. well i mean be, dude 80s, pre- that's taking it way back so oh, but oh, but austin oh, oh. and i are the same age so we should so we growth grew up in the 80s like yeah. you know we were filming in the 90s but we grew up in the 80s so this is probably gotta be in our wheelhouse i would imagine so oh boy oh boy, oh, boy. I didn't get to watch I, a lot but right. did i make this too hard then well, let's give it a shot. All right, let's. I don't know. We'll okay. see. Uh, okay, so name a. Remember, just buzz in. Uh, in this film, uh, Leslie Nielsen was a pilot. Buzz. Oh, okay. Yeah. Airplane. There you go. Airplane. Shout Airplane. Out to, Airplane. Shout out to Austin. Austin got it pretty quick. Oh, Austin you know? got that one quick. He had, see, he was a sleeper. He was like. And he lulled me in thinking he was not, oh, I don't know what, I don't know. I'm not that good at this. Bam. First oh, no. style on our You knew he was going to get it. Uh, oh, okay. Of course. In in this film, uh, this actor plays a, a uh, how do you call it? An arc, right? He uh, he goes searching for treasure. Plays a what? Uh, searching for treasure. Oop, for I think a, we for lost for everybody. A, Buzz. Oh, no. I don't know. Oh. Hold, hold Man, on, Austin. Perfect. Hold on, Austin. I think, I think, I, I kind of lost lo- everybody. Yep, we lost. <laughs> That's perfect timing. We lost. You can't answer. You can't answer. Well, yes. <laughs> that's the fun of live. I don't know if anyone's hearing me or not, but we can we can hear you. I can hear you seems bro. to have all disappeared. We can hear oh, you. Oh. Hold on. We can hear you. We can hear you. <laughs> Roy, 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 Roy. <laughs> Let me let him know that we could hear him. This is the great thing about live. And you, what was your answer, Austin? Uh, I'm guessing Indiana Jones, maybe. Oh, you got it, bro. Okay. Damn, that's two. That's two right there. Okay. Um, I see. I see him. <laughs> well, now that I'm playing by myself, I mean, this is. Gonna I be think. Easy. I think you won. Now it's the Austin and Alex show. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Well, you know what? It is eight fifty-seven. We got three minutes left before the show's over. Let's see if we can get him back in here real quick. Hold on a second. Um, he should be. Yeah. He should. I think he lost internet, and he's down the street from you. So maybe you should sh- throw some. Uh, the internet in this area is they, notorious for being crap. Oh yeah, for real. Oh no. Major metropolitan area. You should be able to get decent internet. Can't do it here. Let me see. I just got mine upgraded to one gig. Oh my God! I hope that he's able to come back with two, mi- three minutes left. He has to make it back. He just morphed out of here. I think he probably had to go fight. You know, That's so what it is, dude. so you know, yeah. No. So Austin, before before we uh, we get him back in here, um, let us a little bit tell us a little bit of uh, how people could find you and like what are the easiest ways for people to follow you um, besides fan word like on social media that they could uh, keep up with you for your daily uh, daily happenings. Cool. So I'll tell you the, the easiest way to do it rather than me give you all my media links. Just go to my website, austinstjohn.biz. And at the very top right, you'll see the little media links and clicks. That links you to everything I got all in one spot. And uh, you can look at it and decide which one uh, you want to jump on from there. Okay, cool. And um, oh, I think he's he's trying to come back. Oh, no, okay. Um, yeah, he wants to know if we're still going. <laughs> yeah. we're going dude i think he we're definitely going. We're on you and um and really quickly uh any future uh plans for um any more perhaps uh power rangers uh in the future for you like uh you you may be thinking one you know, day writing your I, own i actually had a conversation today 
that I cannot elaborate on. And it came out of nowhere. I did not expect it. And all I can say is there are discussions. Is there are discussions, but I'm not oh even going to Oh my breathe. God. I'm not even going to breathe on what. And I don't know if the discussions will go anywhere. I was just amazed that there was a discussion open today. Oh and boy. I am dying to know what it is. You heard if it here any- first. You heard it on the Fantastic Duo show. There was a discussion. Put this out on every website. Call TMZ right now. Austin St. John just said there is a discussion. That's all we needed to know. Austin, we, we're really appreciative that you came on today and uh, you know you uh, took time out of your day to come on our show. Um, even though we lost Steve at the very last second, um you know he kind of just said you know what i'm gonna give him the floor i think he said because uh he left before now i'm leaving (laughs) that's right this is payback i get it that's all right yeah that it's it's pretty much payback so uh once again thank you so much man we greatly appreciate you and uh we hope to uh hear from you later on again man come back yeah absolutely thank you guys thank you everyone on the chat room we appreciate you and we'll see you soon